Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Jepson, and I play Condor Joe in the series Gotcha Man. And uh, I'm going to be answering a few questions from this nameless person over here, faceless Ooh. mystery man. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I was back in the 70s when I was a kid. I have vivid memories of, of watching it. I think the names I remember it by are Battle of the Planets and G-Force, you know, and uh, I remember being in elementary school and watching it and uh, then going home and trying to draw pictures of the, of the flying phoenix, you know. I, until now, I didn't remember what all these things were called, and I still am a little fuzzy on it, but <laughs> I'm learning as I go, folks. I got the role because uh, I did a bunch of anime voiceovers in all, I live in Austin, and uh, ADV had a branch there. And then they moved all the operations to Houston, but one of the guys that I worked with, you, Charlie, in fact, one of the producers uh, who had used me a lot in Austin said, hey, I got this thing, uh, why don't you come down? I know it's in Houston, you don't have to drive down here, but it's gotcha, man, and you told me it was Battle of the Planets, and I was like, absolutely, I'm gonna come down. So I came down and auditioned for the role. And it, I auditioned just for, for Condor Joe. And uh, I was hoping that I'd get it because it just, you know, I loved this cartoon when I was a kid. And so I, you know, I had a definite connection to it. And so when I got to be Joe, you know, it was like, man, that's great. You know, I get to be the cool guy. I get to be the, the kind of the Han Solo guy of this, of this series. You know, that's how I felt, you know, so. I auditioned and I got it and now here I am. What do I think about? I think about how I'm going to voice him, how I'm going to, uh, to, to say the lines and make them interesting and, and, and naturalistic and make them fit the action and everything. And I think about what a cool costume the guy's wearing and where can I get one. Well, he's really, uh, like I said, I, I equate him with like that Han Solo type. He's kind of like tough, and he's kind of like he flies in the face of authority a little bit, you know. I mean, he's a team player, and he does what, you know, everybody, you know, what the leaders say and everything, but he's still kind of maverick, you know. And so I take that kind of angle with him. He's always wanting to shoot the bird missiles off, and he's always wanting to, you know, he's like, ugh, what are we on this, you know, stupid escort mission for, you know? So it's that kind of an attitude, that kind of cool, aloof, but tough attitude that I take, I guess. And uh, just looking at him, looking at the character as I'm doing it, kind of helps me get into character because he's always got this look about him, you know, that I like. It's cool. Like I said, he's a team player, but he's kind of a lone wolf, you know, and he's a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He's, you know, he's kind of his own man and he wants to do his own thing, but at the same time he wants to help everybody else out. So he works well with them. He kids, you know, Jinpei a little bit and uh, he kind of, you know, he, he lets Ken kind of lead him since Ken is a leader, but uh, he may be reluctantly sometimes, right. so. Um, is that right? I love uh, the sound effects. I love seeing these images that I haven't seen since I was a kid, you know, and I haven't. I, you know, this is not something, something that I've seen throughout life. It's like, oh yeah, there it is again. I haven't seen these things since I was seven, eight years old, whatever it was. So it's like, oh my God, I remember that. I remember when they fought that guy. I remember when the ship turned into the flaming phoenix thing and, uh, and um, the music is really cool. And uh, it's just, it's simple, straightforward kind of fun and action, you know? And I've, on several of the other anime projects that I've done voices for, They've been really convoluted and strange, or they've been really, you know, da da da, you know, fun. And, but this one is just straightforward, fun action. And uh, so those are some of the things I like about it. Uh, let's see. Um, in Steam Detectives, I played the Night Phantom, which was a cool character. Kind of like a bat, Batman, bad Batman kind of thing. Um, in Oh, the other cool one that I have a connection with from my childhood was Mazenkaiser. I got to play the uh, 
the pilot of the, the Great Mazinger, was that the full night? It's been so long since I did it, but I used to play with the Mazinger toy when it was called the Shogun Warriors back in the 70s. And so when I got, when I auditioned for that and I saw what it was, it was kind of like this, but on a smaller scale, because it was only two episodes of that. But to be able to play the character that pilots the, sh you know, the Great Mazinger, which was the toy that I played with, the Shogun Warrior, when I was a kid. So that was a cool one. And uh, then one of the kind of, like the ones I was saying, was kind of like that. Uh, <laughs> I was in uh, Wedding Peach. I did two characters. I did the, uh, the love angel, not the love, I wasn't the love angel. I was uh, the angel Limone, and I was also the, uh, the captain of the soccer team, uh, Yanagiba. So all the girls were going gaga over Yanagiba. <gasps> oh, Captain Yanagiba. So uh, those are just some of the ones, some of the memorable ones that I played. Well, the booth is very tiny and cold. And no, no, it's, um, I, since I was very young, I've been recording things, recording my voice, little skits and things in my bedroom with my friends. We'd all sit around on some cheap little tape recorder and, you know, come up with tape after tape of just stupid stuff. You know, I listened to it and I was like, oh my God, you know, when you're 13, you think you're making up all this crazy fun stuff. And so, it seems like my whole life has led towards being able to do something like this. So it's exciting for me to be in the booth and to be behind the microphone and wear the headphones. And sometimes I'll even catch a glimpse of myself in the reflection of the window. It's like, oh, look at that. You know, here I am doing what I, you know, never thought I could do or never thought when I was a kid that I'd be, you know, doing it. But as I, as I matured and thought, you know, I think I would like to do that. And now that I'm able to do it, it's great. And um, working with the producers, working with you, Charlie, is fun because, you know, there's a great rapport. And we both enjoy what we're doing. We, we, you know, as we're watching, you know, on the little screen, watching the episode unfold and as I'm adding the, the voices to it, it's fun, you know. And I, when I get to do the other characters that aren't Joe, Condor Joe, I get to do, like, bad guys and stuff, you know, to fill it out because there's so many people. You know, you'd have to have a cast of a thousand voice actors otherwise, you know. So, you know, you'll get in the booth with me and we'll, like, have some crowd scene where they're running away from the giant mummy that's just crushed the airplane, you know, and just come up with goofy, fun stuff. So um, it's fun to be in there and it's fun to, to try to act along with the, with the animation and to try to give my best. And I always think, I'm always thinking, well, whoever's watching this and listening to the, the English dub of it, I hope that they like what I'm doing. I hope that I'm doing well by the character and by the whole show in general. I have never been to an anime convention. I went to, I think I went to a Star Trek convention once. But uh, yeah, I'd go, you know, I'd, <laughs> that's, that's uh, I've thought about that since the first one I did. It's like, ooh, I wonder if I get to go to a convention. Do I get to sit at a convention and, and answer questions? And of course, then I, I flash back to the Simpsons episodes where they go to an itchy and scratchy convention and the guy in the audience says, uh, on episode 327, when you pray, played Itchy's uh, rib cage like a xylophone, you hit two different ribs and yet they made the exact same tone. What are we to think? This is a magic, you know, rib cage? You know, I think of that, but I'd still like to go. I'd, I'd like to meet the people that are so into it that they dress up like the characters, that, uh, that they know all the episodes and, uh, you know. Yeah, I went to another commission when I was a kid and I got to meet Horshack from Welcome Back, Cotter. That was a thrill. That was really a thrill. I um, do other voiceover things for like commercials, you know, boring stuff. <laughs> Selling, you know, insurance or something. Um, I play guitar. I am a graphic designer and uh, I'm in a band that is a, is a Beatles tribute band in Austin called the Eggmen. And so we do all the Beatles songs, we dress up. None of us look like the Beatles, we don't try to like wear the wigs and go that route. We dress in the suits, you know, and then we get psychedelic and like I actually have a couple of Sgt. Pepper outfits, yes, he admits on camera he owns Sgt. Pepper uniforms. And Beetle boots and um, so that's a lot of fun to do. And uh, those are just some of the things I do. I always try to keep busy. I'd say that 
first of all, I don't think anybody would say that, oh, that's an old show, I'm not gonna watch it, you know? I think that even people that I know personally that aren't into anime remember this thing or have a memory of it somehow. And so they get excited about it. But if you are kind of like on the fence, if you don't have a connection to it, I think it's just fun. I think the visuals are unlike what you're seeing these days in anime. It's, uh, I don't want to use the word retro because I think that's overused sometimes, but it's got that great, cool retro feel to it. It's got the music. It's got, you never know what you're going to see, you know, what crazy thing those guys came up with, those animators and the storytellers back then. Like, we were just talking about the, the villains. I mean, you're going to get a different, crazy, whacked-out villain every time, you know? So it's kind of like, it's this little peculiar thing that is really well done and really interesting and really fun to watch, I think. And it's a different flavor, and it's a different kind of little thing than what you're used to these days if you're watching anime all the time and watching the new really you know uh, technologically advanced things this is a the animation is a throwback you know it's like the old speed racer kind of stuff so i don't know i think it's just fun i think it's it's simple and it's fun and it's uh, certainly fun to be in i'm glad to be a part of it Well, I don't know, you know, he's got a real thing against the bad guys because from what I know, the backstory, they uh, killed his parents, is that right? Didn't they uh, do something bad to the old boy? Well, I think he's, they're gonna, Galactor is gonna, they're gonna, he, there's gonna come a day of reckoning, I guess. A Condor Joe is going to do more than just keep pressing that bird missile button, you know, 58 times in a row. He's, you know, he's got that pent up anger towards those guys, so I don't know. I'm looking forward to finding out myself what happens. I, uh, I think that uh, Galactor might turn out to be his father in the end. I think, I don't know. Thanks for watching Gotcha Man, everybody. Um, keep on watching. I know I'm going to when these things come out. I'll be right there with you. I'll be at the convention asking myself questions because there's so many of them. <laughs> but um, keep watching. I hope I do right by the character. I hope you uh, enjoy this, these interviews and all these extras, I hope we don't bore you too much. And uh, keep it up, and I'll hopefully talk to you soon.